Okay, good morning. good morning. I think everyone can hear me. Sorry, I'm going to take it in English. Um, you'll find out why in a little bit. Hopefully, I can convince you that what I'm doing is uh, something that will be of interest to you. And also, what I'm going to talk about uh, this morning is about maker spaces in education, educational maker spaces. And one of the things I want to also do in advance is invite you to take part in this because this is a brand new area, and I think it's very, very key because it addresses a lot of problems, a lot of problems that are going on in Sweden. And I'll tell you why that is. So to start, as you know, my name is Mark, and I work at the Kote Hall. I'm the professor for IT product development. Whoa, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if the KTH knew what they were asking for when they hired me. But the thing was is that the next IT product, what are those things? And maybe a lot of people at the Koteho think, oh, well, you know, it's going to be the next iPad, or it's going to be the next smartphone, or it's going to be the next, you know, thing that you're, that, that's going to come out of the usual suspects, right? Apple. To me, it's not. To me, the next IT products are everything around you. I view it as an incredibly broad area. I see the next IT products in the way we interact, in the clothes that we wear, in the buildings we work in, in the communities we live in. The next city is going to be an IT product. We're already hearing the next vehicles are going to be the next IT products, right? Architecture is an IT product. Furniture design is an IT product, all of that. So for me, how do you design those? That's what I'm supposed to be doing research in. How do you design those? And what I immediately found out was first off, if you go up to where I work, Shista, Shista Science City, right? It's full of IT companies, that's not enough. I need artists, I need sculptors, I need actors. I need people who are, who are in all of these fine arts areas, all from all walks of life. They all have to be part of the teams that make these products. Otherwise, I'm not going to have my future IT products. And then came the next problem. Well, how do they work together? Now, you've seen 100 million comics, right? Dilbert, the geeks. OK, so we got the geeks on their side. And I love my geeks because they are my students. I teach engineers. I teach STEM people. I teach people who understand about science, technology, and math. It has to be a number, right? The answer is two. That's how engineers work. But the problem is that's not how creative designers, artists, and actors work. <coughs> they think about what they want to create, and they don't say the answer is two. So how do I get my engineers and these people working together? That requires interdisciplinary design methods, and that requires ways of being able to bring these two very different, very diverse groups of contributors together face to face and have them designing these new things. Now to do that, I study the methods and the methodologies, and one of the things that really attracted me was the idea of a makerspace. But to me, a makerspace, and I'll confess straight up, don't let the title professor fool you. Most I would say 99, maybe 99% of the things that I learned didn't come from classrooms. It came from somewhere else. Where was that place? Well, when I really looked at it, I realized it was the face-to-face -face joint communication between people, the spreading of knowledge between peers that are trying to get to the same place. Well, that's what makerspaces are about. What makerspaces are, are they are places where individuals can work together and study together and exchange knowledge. They're knowledge exchange areas where they then concentrate on a central problem or a central project. That's what a makerspace is. What a wonderful model for an educational environment. Think about it. I now have students of all ages and from all backgrounds focusing on this problem. Because that problem is central, that's all we care about. I don't care how old my students are or how young they are. I don't care if they come from engineering or from social sciences or from history or from acting or from sculpture or from art. That's fine because that's not what's central. I don't care about their titles. I don't care about their, 
their other kinds of, of honors that they may have received. That doesn't make them more or less able to be a contributor. So by bringing this into the space and saying, all right, this is how we're going to learn. It also advances some of these new ideas or starts to play with some of the new ideas that you've heard about in education. Now, I've been here all week and I've been to a lot of sessions and I've heard a lot about the concerns of education, especially in Sweden. How are we going to make it better? How are we going to make it so that people get the jobs that are really going to support the society and are going to be rewarding jobs and are going to be able to give them the skills and the knowledge they need to be able to create new jobs and new companies? Well, I believe that by turning the classroom around a little bit, we can further that in these ways. This is why makerspaces in education works. Now, I should point out, these aren't just ideas. We've been doing them. The reason it works is because I can now take the theory that happens in the normal classroom. I'm not replacing the normal classroom at all. I'm letting educators do what they do best. I want teachers at schools in Sweden to continue to do what they do, which is educate. And I want them to create the theory theoretical base that now you go into the maker space and you apply. That's how the students are then going to practice the theory, practice what happens in your classrooms, practice then what they need to be able to then work together and put together to create new opportunity. Now, we've been doing this for real. This isn't just an idea. So my courses are very interdisciplinary because of the area that I'm in. And I've been, over the last more than two, three years, running joint classes with partner schools. We've been doing it as an activist motion, uh, as an activist action. We have been doing it under the radar. So I've had joint classes with Maladal and Hochschulen. I now have joint classes going on with Kunstfach. And now some new classes going on with the uh, Stockholm Innovation and Science School in Schista. What we're doing is we're actually bringing the students together. They're learning the theory in their own courses, in their own classrooms, but then they come together to practice it. And we've even involved the public. And I can tell you now that the results have been spectacular. The students themselves have been able to learn from each other, pass on the skills, and we've noticed something else that has happened. In addition to the students learning new things, I've had hardware engineers become computer programmers. I've had, I've had technical people start to look at how that technology really fits into the social sciences and into community sciences. We've also done experiments where we've opened these things up to the general public. We've done that in the Shista Public Library. And what we've noticed now is, is that because the problems are central and we don't care about where you came from, we don't care about your background, your age, or anything else, the richness of the kinds of solutions of the problems that the students are studying becomes huge. This has enormously beneficial uh, aspects to it. Think about it. What I've also found is that educational maker spaces shorten the mental and physical distances between people in your community. They do. Realize that by working up in Shista, Shista is very much an immigrant community. I'm one of them. And while we bring these people together, all of a sudden, they're working together, they're thinking together, and the best thing about it is, is that the opportunity space grows. And, and the reason for that is, is that as I bring more diverse people in, they look at how their skills, their ambitions, fit with everybody else's. They're working together. Ah, I am thinking about doing these sorts of things. I want to go into these directions. But you're an engineer, and you're telling me about how technology works. And you're a sculptor, and you're telling me about how design works. And I can start to connect the dots. And I can start to see how I fit in, where before maybe I didn't think I did. And that's where the innovation comes from. And that's where the entrepreneurship comes from. So that's how I'm starting to construct these spaces. The schools haven't changed. The educators haven't changed. I don't want teachers in Swedish schools to start being told that, oh yeah, we now have this initiative. Go off and be a computer programmer. No, I want you to do what you do best. I don't buy this idea that, oh yes, every single classroom has to be teaching computer technologies and sciences and that everybody now has to be 
a computer scientist. No, I don't buy that at all. I think people who are educators need to do what they do, which is to educate and find talent. That's what it's all about. Now, another advantage that's come out of this is that because it is so broad and because and now we are bringing the community together in these school spaces, realize these spaces are working with the schools. But they also can engender innovation themselves. So one group I'm working with is, uh, is a number of my students who have formed a small company called Inicio. They're starting to build it. And what Inicio does is it realizes one more thing, is that when I bring these contributors together, they do more than just trade ideas for the problem. They also mentor each other. Because this is how I view what an educator does. I think the primary role of an educator is to find talent, find opportunity in their students. What are you good at? What would you love to do? What would you rather do than anything else in the world? Now, as an educator, I'm going to help you develop that. I'm going to, let you, I'm going to help you develop that into ability. And where does that occur? That occurs in the maker space. That occurs with people around you, helping you, coaching you, mentoring you. Mentoring is incredibly important. Think about the community and the number of people who live in it who've, who have 40 years of experience. What are they going to do with it? Just die? They can't take it with them. Come on. So they might as well come into the maker space and pass it on. Why not? Think about how that would strengthen the schools. So what Inicio does is it takes advantage of that. What Inicio does is it says, all right, we are going to not only provide an umbrella organization where we can use maker spaces and allow all these different schools to come together and share in the space, but they also have a career mentoring program that goes along with it. It's a two-year program, and what they do is they help the students find what they are passionate about. They sit down and they say, let's look at what you're studying, let's bring you together in a group, and now we will help you find this direction. We will mentor you, we will coach you. If you, want, if you need ability, we'll coach you and help you identify what to learn and who to learn it from. If you have a lot of ability, we'll help you turn that ability with the makerspace environment into accomplishment. <coughs> Connect the dots. Figure out what you can build, do, learn, and go on. Think about how that would help students decide what the careers they should be in. Right now, how do, they, how do people choose a career? I don't know about you, but I know how it was for me. A parent. You're not doing this, you're doing that. Or worse kinds of things. The news media, you know, if you major in that, it's all going to be outsourced to, you know, lower Antarctica, and you're going to be out of a job. All this other kind of stuff that has nothing to do with reality at all. What is the career you should choose? It's the one you would give everything you've got to do. So that's what Anisio does. Independent of these other external forces, it's not good enough to just do what your friends are doing. You need to do what you are doing, what you need to do, where you need to go. So Anisio helps that process. They encourage. They further finding your passion, if you will. Then bringing it together, they then say, all right, let's show through the makerspace activities and your schools what that path means and let you connect the dots. So right now, Anisio has just started out. It's just forming now. They've got pilot programs, and they're looking at engineering. They're looking at electronics and the IT space, of course, but they're going to grow. They've got a very large roadmap where they're going to be bringing in makerspace activities in architecture. They're going to be bringing in makerspace activities in mechanics and vehicles. They're going to be bringing it in in living spaces and environments, things like that. That's as they grow. So you can see what a, what a kind of, that. so that is really what a makerspace, an educational makerspace is. We now are starting to call them mentor spaces. And we want them to then be bolt-ons for the school. So to close with this, I invite you all to become uh, involved in this, especially if you're an educator or you're thinking about community, uh, community engagement. Think about how bringing people together like this really does enrich the community. It shortens those mental and physical distances. It's inclusion. It brings people in. This is where the new companies and the new jobs are going to come from. And this is where 
we need to be able to build the community as it goes out. When I think about Shista and how it has to build out from just its IT base into something that is going to be much broader and much richer with new businesses, this is the way you do it. So if you would like to get involved, please do so. If you want to know more about the sorts of things that we're doing, our pilot projects are going to continue on for the next year. We've got more schools. I'm actually now combining together gymnasia courses and students with Koteho students together in this mentoring and makerspace area. If you want to get involved or know more, of course, please, I invite you to send me email. I'm very open about these sorts of things. Uh, Inicio, by the way, is a nonprofit organization. It is there only to do this. It's not about a, it's not a, a for-profit makerspace or a traditional kind of city makerspace. It's a very different model. My email address is real easy. Just think about the, the most common name possible if you live in the, in the UK or the US. It's M. Smith, no dots or spaces or anything, at koteho.sa. So I'm very easy to get a hold of, and I would be really, really happy to work with you or answer questions that you've got, find out more. Or if you're out of school or in a community, definitely look at and explore ways to get involved. Okay, so thank you.